So I have a lot of people, a lot of companies, ask if I want to take a look at Kickstarter projects, at Indiegogo projects, and generally I, I'll, I'll say, eh, maybe I'll, I'll see, or, or I, I get that you're getting it funded and everything, but with what we've seen with Kickstarters and Indiegogo projects in the past, I don't really know if I want to cover it too much. They have to have at least some kind of weird or interesting gimmick or unique feature to it that makes me go, okay, I'll at least take a look at it because it sounds different enough and interesting enough. Power cases are becoming pretty common now for the Switch since everybody wants a way to make their Switch last longer than the three hours or so when you play Zelda, sometimes less. If you play Splatoon 2, it lasts obviously less than three hours, especially if you're playing online over Wi-Fi. That actually kills the battery pretty quickly. So naturally, these cases are all over the place and a lot of them are hitting Kickstarter. This one in particular is from Best Key. It is their power case and they're doing it in a way that was interesting enough for me to say, yeah, I'll take a look if you want to send one over. They did. This is a case that has a, a way to hold the switch that's different. It actually uses magnets. Yeah, that's right. The switch attaches this with magnets. And I should have taken a look at this a little sooner because I have quite a bit of feedback for them since in its current state, I don't think it's ready to be shipped, and I hope that with this video they get some constructive feedback and criticism to help them change it and just make a better product. First off, let's talk a little bit about this case and its current status on Kickstarter. It is fully funded, people have backed it, and currently it has 342 backers with $21,402 that has now helped bring this project to life. And currently they have several that they did sell at the time. Their super early bird, for example, was $49. And the original MSRP was $89. And that gets you the case. And pretty much what you see here, the case, uh, the little, basically the, there's two different cases with the battery and then a cable down there. Now we're gonna show you here the unboxing. It does have pretty standard stuff in it. It has, of course, the closed cell foam to keep everything safe. On the top, you actually see right away the grips and then the battery. This is a 10,000 milliamp hour battery. And then underneath of that, there is a casing that goes on your switch because it does have a magnet on each side. And then a small cable. We're gonna talk about that small cable because I think that is the biggest thing they need to eliminate right away. But yes, everything inside is pretty straightforward. There's nothing fancy or anything. I'm pretty confident the one that they sent over to me was a prototype model, to be honest, because there are a few things that look a little uh, cheaply made that I think came out of like a 3D printer. I'll point those out as well. Now you might be wondering, how does this whole thing work? I mean, seriously, magnets? Well, it's actually a pretty simple concept that seems to be kind of left still on the drawing room floor. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Now you take the one casing and you put it on your switch. I noticed that the, the casing itself is pretty thin and light and it really doesn't add much depth to the switch itself. And everything is still easily accessible, whether the game cart slot, the vents for, for air uh, ventilation, everything is there, the power up and, and then you got the volume up and down, everything. Everything is easy to still get to. That's not an issue. And the idea here now is to then take the battery casing and it just attaches. It pretty much jumps to it because you have magnets on each side. And then you'll even see grips. These grips on either side also slide on very similar to the Joy-Con controllers on the Switch. It's pretty clear that's where they got the idea from. And I noticed that on the inside where the railings are, specifically on the grip side, those appear to be printed almost from like a 3D printer. So when I saw that, I figured, okay, these must be a prototype model that I received early before they finished their campaign and they were set to actually ship out later this month. So when I saw that, I said, okay, I'll, I'll kind of judge this as a prototype model. And what you see here is how it works. It attaches, and then you might be wondering, well, how do I actually charge the switch from this battery? It, it doesn't actually plug in. It doesn't have inductive charging or wireless charging, we'll call it that. It doesn't have wireless charging, like how you'd see a phone, like a Samsung phone. My Samsung phone, for example, has wireless charging and I've used it. Okay, well, how does that work? You actually have to take that small cable and plug it in. This is one of the biggest drawbacks I've ever seen for something like this. To go from something as convenient as a magnet attaching it to then having to still plug it in makes little sense to me. Honestly, if they could have made it so it charged wirelessly as soon as it attached straight up, you got a great product here. But as soon as you have to fish around for a little cable like that, it all falls apart and it isn't really convenient anymore. Now this is a 10,000 milliamp hour battery and the performance is as you would expect. It's no different really than the other 10,000 milliamp hour batteries where you get 
roughly nine to 10 hours out of a game, something like Zelda, for example, will get you close to that. So yes, it does extend the life of your Switch heavily, but it still just isn't very convenient. Now, looking at the battery itself, it's pretty small. Honestly, for a 10,000 milliamp hour battery, when you remove the grips, it's a pretty good size. Honestly, if they had more ports on here and it was a battery bank, I'd be actually pretty impressed and pretty happy with it. But it has the one port on the bottom. That's something a lot of other charging cases are starting to do as well. Adding ports to the side like an entire USB Type A on one side, as we've seen before with other cases that let you do things like charge your phone. Because while it is a 10,000 milliamp hour battery, you might not use that entire battery capacity when you're on a flight or something. Maybe it's like a five hour flight and you know you're going to have still more power left over. Well, maybe you want to plug your phone in and charge that while you're playing as well. Another thing they could be adding here, seriously, is just more ports just for extra things you might want to charge. One of the biggest uh, concerns for me with this case is the magnets aren't strong. They're, they really aren't. It's very easy to separate your switch from the battery itself. And I don't know how much stronger they need to make the magnets or if they can. I don't really know what effect that would have on something like the switch or even their battery itself because it's it could damage it, I guess. It's hard to say, but here's the thing. The magnet itself is so weak, it, you could, if you turn it upside down by accident, the switch falls right off of it. It's very easy to, even if you hold it up and you kind of look at it and it's vertical, the switch will fall off of it. This is a real, this is a real concern. I think they're expecting you to pretty much keep it at one angle at all times and really hold it while you have the grips going on. But there are several times where maybe you'll have one hand on the switch, and you know, maybe you're, you're kind of walking with it or something, or maybe you grab it at an angle. It's, it's very concerning, especially when we have things like that cable tethered to it to charge and you lose you lose your grip on it or it slides off and all of a sudden the, the cable's being yanked on by a battery or your switch, even worse. Yeah, that's it's a bit of a problem. The magnet would absolutely have to be stronger. And I'm still trying to think of how they could get rid of this cable. I mean, I get they want it to attach with a magnet, but honestly, maybe the magnet could just be an extra bit of, uh, I guess, just, just, just an extra way to hold it and it still clips in. I, I don't know. This, this seems like they're thinking a little too far ahead and they're just missing the one thing they need, which is that wireless charging. I'm also a little surprised their price is as high as it is for what they're offering. $89 MSRP seems pretty steep to be honest for having one port it's not very convenient it's just it's overall i think the idea is there because they want to make it so it just snaps to it and attaches very easily but they cannot rely simply on that magnet mechanism to keep the switch anchored it really needs more and honestly i'm not even really sure why these remove on the sides the grips because they don't attach the Joy-Con separately, like they don't encase the Joy-Con or grab it or anything. Seriously, if you hold that up to the Joy-Con controller, it just falls off. It really doesn't have any means other than just being a way to grip the side of it. I'm not even really sure why they slide off, to be honest. That just seems like a little gimmick that they have added on to kind of mirror what the Joy-Con controllers do. But I just, I don't really know why they need to come off of there. You might as well just leave it fixed. I know I'm kind of beating this thing down a lot, but honestly, it seems just like they're kind of all over the place with this thing. And I like the idea. When I heard those using magnets to attach it, I thought that was a neat kind of outside of the box, I guess, thinking for something like this. But honestly, they would be better off just having it clip in like normal and keep these grips on the side because... That would be good to have a way to kind of grip your switch, I guess. And honestly, take the magnet part out, just make it clip together and it's just more sturdy because right now I'd be scared having my switch in this thing just because it's so easy to fall out. This is again, the best key power case. It's finished up on Kickstarter. I assume they'll probably try to sell it after that. Uh, and I believe they're starting to ship later on this month, but I know Kickstarters tend to sometimes kind of fall out of their release windows and everything, especially if they want to make some changes. And this honestly is a big change because right now the, the magnet just isn't very strong. And I'll be curious to see how the final product is when they decide to ship it. Like I said, either later on this month or the following month or whatnot, we'll see. But currently, I don't think it's it's in a good state to be shipped out and, and just be out there for everyone to pick up. But we'll see what happens. I think the biggest issue is this little cable. It's just, it, it makes no sense. It just, it kills the convenience of snapping to it with a magnet when you still have to carry this around and plug it in. Whereas other cases, it already has that built in with the port. You just snap it in, close it, and you're good to go. But not any of those cases really have these grips. I like these grips. I like the idea of that. If it was seized to it and it clipped in like normal, I think you'd have something here because then you could eliminate this cable 
and have a much sturdier way for the Switch to kind of be held on. But yeah, guys, that's going to do it for my thoughts on the best key power case. Uh, I, I don't know if it's there yet. I, I, don't, I don't personally think it is, but I'll be curious to see if they make any changes going forward. Guys, if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button, dislike it if not. Let me know your thoughts on this case from Best Key or any other Kickstarter cases you might want me to take a look at in the future and give my honest opinion on. Again, thanks to Best Key for sending this out, and I'll be curious to see what you guys do going forward with any other products or this one in particular and how you kind of bring it to the finish line and finalize it. I, if you do make a lot of changes, I'd be more than happy to take a look at it then as well and see maybe if, if it's any better or what you've done to kind of fix maybe some of the issues. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.